Hello, everybody. Welcome to Paint with Mel. My name is Mel, and this is my studio. And I am so excited to have you here today. Welcome to the first installment of my Paint with Mel series, where you can purchase an all-in-one painting kit that I'll ship directly to your door. And together, we're going to go through this lesson. Today, we're painting pumpkins and roses. It really should just be pumpkin, not plural, but made a little more sense. It's super cute, isn't it? I love this little wooden plaque. It's 12 inches long and five inches tall. Just enough room to put this fantastic pumpkin with some sweet flowers. And this will hang anywhere in your home. Uh, I would even recommend hanging it on your front door if you decide to seal it. It should hold up pretty well to the weather. It's got a hanger on the back, as I'm sure you've noticed, so that you can just easily hang it. I had currently have it hanging with a push pin right there. And super simple, super easy. I would expect that it's going to take you anywhere from an hour and 30 minutes to two hours in total to complete this painting. Remember, I'm on tape. So, oh, do people say tape anymore? I'm on video. So you can pause me, rewind, come back. Um, if I'm getting boring, you can even skip ahead if you'd like. But you've got the ability to control your time. So that's the first thing that you may find that's a little bit different than going to the traditional paint and sip studio is here you can take a break whenever you want to. You can eat whatever you want, drink whatever you want, smoke whatever you want, wear whatever you want. You don't have to wear a mask. You're safe at home and you can do you by yourself or with your friends. So enough of that, let's get going. Uh, let's start with your painting kit. By now I assume you've opened it. The paper that it's wrapped in is designed and intended for you to lay out on whatever surface it is that you're gonna be painting on today whether that's your kitchen counter, your coffee table, your kitchen table, whatever you got. If you, even if you're working with a tabletop easel, I always recommend covering a, servet, a surface if you don't want to get paint on it. I like getting paint on my surface, so I don't really care. Um, but if you're, it's your kitchen table, you're going to want to cover it up. So there are two sheets of that newsprint there. The other thing that that piece of newsprint does is it gives you an opportunity to practice. You'll be able to practice creating some little flowers or some little leaves on your newsprint before you actually put it on your wooden palette. And that way you get a couple of passes at it before you actually, you know, do it for keeps. Um, if only all of life were so easy, right? So with that said, get your newsprint out, cover your surface. If you're using an easel, great, get that set up. I would also recommend, I like to use these uh, takeout containers. Um, I try to save a few from the recycling bin, and I use the lid as my actual paint palette. I'll put the paint into the lid, and then I can take my packets of paint that are unused, put them in the dish, put the lid on it, and then this will keep in the fridge for a really long time. I've got one in there that's been in there for about three weeks now, and everything is still good. So if you've got a container, that's great. Otherwise, a uh, paper plate, or if you've got a palette that you prefer to work with, fantastic, grab it. Before you start squeezing out your paint, I want to show you how I intended these paint packets to be used. My eldest daughter had the great idea to make ketchup packets out of paint so that they would be lighter to ship, reducing our carbon footprint, reducing the cost to you, and reducing the amount of waste. I don't want to ship you a whole bottle of paint. You're not going to need it. So with that said, grab it by the corner. Flip it around a couple of times, just like you would a soy sauce packet. And that's cleared the path here for you to just take your scissors, whoops, and give it a little snip. Now, don't go too far. You just want to open it up enough that you can squeeze a little bit out. I'm going to put out, I'm going to start with about a nickel size amount of white paint. That's the color I'm going to use the most of. I'm just going to take my container or excuse me, my packet, and put that in the bowl part of the container. And I'm going to continue squeezing out my paint. So I've got about a nickel size amount of white, and we're going to need about a dime size amount of the remaining colors. I want to show you the materials that I use to take care of my brushes. I've got an old spaghetti jar, spaghetti sauce jar here filled with water. I only have it about halfway up, just a little bit less. But look, I put those little glass things, little like, not beads, but let me show you some. Here they are. Oh, can you see? 
You can buy them at the dollar store in a little mesh bag. Um, they're like little baubles. You can glue them on things, stuff like that. Little glass dimes almost. So I put a handful in the bottom of my jar of water. And that way, when I want to rinse my brushes, ooh, which way is the camera going? I can just move them around. And that's going to gently knock the bristles around. And that will force them to loosen up the paint. And then I can just rinse and drag my brush across the edge to clean it up. So keep that in mind. Uh, you could use marbles. You could use just about anything that's hard that's not going to soak up the water that's, you know, got some smooth edges to it. Even rocks from your garden, you just swish it around. So that's always a great idea. I also use an old washcloth. Oops, I've lost it. I'm looking for it. Hang on. Here it is. I use an old washcloth uh, to wipe off excess paint from my brush and to dry my brush every once in a while after I clean it if I need to. So you'll want to have those two items on hand as well. By now, you've seen that we have two brushes in our kit. We've got a half inch flat brush and a small round tip brush. And I'll be explaining to you how we're going to use the brushes when it comes time to use them. We're not gonna get real technical into, into technique, technical into technique, that's kind of a mouthful. We're not gonna get real academic about it. We're here to have fun. So relax, I'll show you how to use the brush, what direction to pull, whether to lift up, whether to push down. I'll explain all of that as I'm doing it. So don't even sweat it. All you got to figure out is how to hold it like a pencil. We are going to start out with our small round brush and just a little bit of water. Just dip it into your water. We're going to use that water to sketch out the lines here that create the shape of our pumpkin. So just a little bit of water and we'll use that to just draw right on our wood. You can see there, it just leaves a faint little line. I'm just making some marks so you can see. But it'll dry and it'll go away, so we won't have to worry about it. Let's look at how big our pumpkin is. First of all, you can see that there's about three or four fingers worth of space between the left and rightmost edge of the pumpkin and the edge of the plaques. So I like to make the pumpkin a little bit smaller to begin with because it's going to grow as I start to work on those edges. All right, here we go, a little dip in the water. And I'm gonna measure about four fingers in, remember it's gonna grow. And I'm just creating a parenthesis. Come over to the right side, do the same thing, oops. Make a nice parenthesis there. And that's going to begin the shape of our pumpkin. I'm going to pick up the larger brush, the one with the half inch tip. I want to dip that in the water and then I'm going to bring it over to the edge of my white and just pull away a little bit. Do you see how that's starting to get milky? I don't want it to be completely milky, more like cream, like heavy cream, so that it's not dripping but that it's moving nice and smoothly. When we're painting on wood, we need to keep in mind that wood is very, very dry. And it's super important that we add a little bit of water to that first layer we're painting. This will allow the wood to drink it up and be ready to give us more solid coverage as we move into our second and third layer. Now, I am just a little bit type A, so I have to fill in the space between the two slats of wood before I start painting because otherwise it stares at me and it makes me a little bit crazy. Gonna grab a little bit more white and here we go. Now, I don't have quite enough water in this paint. Create a little curve there at the top. Remember, we don't have to worry about the top so much because we're gonna put roses there. It's kind of like when you clean your kitchen, you don't worry about cleaning under the stove every time you clean your kitchen. I mean, I can't remember the last time I did it. How about you? Drop a comment below. We'll see who's waited the longest. All right, here we go. Enough goofiness. Bring that other side around. I want you to look at the stroke that I'm using. Do you see how I'm going the direction that we want our pumpkin segments to eventually go? Go. That's what I'm doing. 
And every time I pick up paint, I'm just dipping into a little bit of water so that that paint will move a little bit more smoothly and be a little more translucent. We want solid coverage, but we're not going to get it with one layer. It doesn't matter how thick you make this paint. In fact, if you make it thick, it does matter. But making it thicker won't do any good. It'll just make it crack and it won't give you consistent coverage. So we're going to do several small thin layers. I find that that's the best way to approach working with a piece of dry wood, particularly because I live in the desert. Okay, so we've got one layer on. You can see my edges are still a little bit fuzzy. I don't care. We're going to smooth those out later. I like to work smart rather than hard. Oops. This is why you put paper down, people. I got a little bit of paint down here. Thank goodness you can't see it. All right, here we go. We got one layer on. There we go. Perfect. All right, let's rinse out that brush. All right, we're back to our close-up view. I'm continuing with that large half-inch brush and white paint. I'm still using a little bit of water, but this time not as much. And I'm continuing with those curved strokes starting in the center and working my way out. I've got to pick up a little more paint here. Just a little bit of water dipped on the end of my bristles every time I pick up some paint because that will help keep that paint nice and fluid and it will satisfy this wood's thirst. This wood is a thirst trap. Is that what the kids say? I don't know. So here I am just continuing. I've gone on the right side, bringing those curved strokes down, grabbing a little bit more water and a little more paint and working my way out to the left. And you'll feel that the paint is moving a little bit differently under your brush now. It might be getting a little bit smoother. Your bristles are gonna drag a little bit less. And it's on this second layer that I want to get in here and really start to pay attention to these little areas of the wood grain. So I'm going to start to squiggle my brush around. I know it's completely contrary to what I just told you about the up and down curves. Hold on, we'll get there. But now look. I call that the scrub and sweep. So I scrub around and that's going to move the ends of the bristles into all the nooks and crannies of the wood. And then I'm just going to sweep it out using that curved stroke to help define that texture in the wood. And again, I want to pay very close attention here for just a second to this little space. These are cut at an angle. It's a little bit easier to reach your brush in. And I just like to work my way through there. I'm not going to fuss with it too much more. If it gets funky, I can always let some roses dangle over it. Remember, we can hide things. And again, I'm not worrying about this dip here in the center. I know it looks like a heart or a booty or whatever you want it to be. But we're going to put a flower there and it's going to be a pumpkin. All right, we're going to mix a little gray. I'm still using the large brush. I'm going to take a little bit of white, just a tiny dab, less than a pea, and move it over onto the side away from everything else. And then with the very corner of my brush, I'm coming to the edge of the black and just picking up the tiniest, tiniest bit and adding that to the white. It is much easier to make your gray darker than it is to make it lighter. You're gonna waste a bunch of paint and everything's gonna turn one color. Now this is not quite dark enough. It's still on the light side. I want a medium tone gray and there are 50 shades, so we're gonna Start off with just a little bit more black and see how we do. There we go. That's much better, that medium tone. Now, the nice thing about this lid as a palette is I can, it's got these nice edges and I can just drag, whoops, drag my brush across the edge and it's gonna scrape off that excess paint so that I can save it and continue using it. I'm gonna switch back to the zoom. I'll show you how we're gonna use this. All right, let's take one more peek at this shade of gray. It's a medium tone gray. And remember, scrape your brush. We're going to use the skinny edge of the brush for this step. 
And what I want to do is use it to define the segments that are going to create our pumpkin. Let's look right back at the original here real quick. We can see the gray shadows that create the depth of the folds of the segment of the pumpkin. That's what we're going for. And before I do, let me point out, these are not perfect. They are not solid lines. That is not what we're going for. Part of the beauty of a pumpkin, if you ask me, is in its imperfection. We've all spent hours searching for the perfect pumpkin and not finding the perfect pumpkin and having to turn it just a little bit so that funky side faces the wall. This pumpkin doesn't have a funky side. We're not going to see it. But remember, its beauty is in its funkiness. We want it to be a little whimsical and a little quirky. So don't put too much pressure on yourself. Okay, here we go. The first thing I'm going to do is start at the top using that skinny edge of the brush and I'm just going to pull a line down just like a parenthesis. It skipped a little right here. Don't care. I can put a flower over it. Then I'm going to make one on the opposite side, but I don't want them to meet at the bottom. The bottom edge of our pumpkin is out of our point of view in this piece. So we don't want those to connect at the bottom. Well, hello, there we go. Connect at the bottom because we wouldn't be able to see them anyway. Going to get a little more gray and I want to come out one more time to the left and see how funky that line is. Don't care. You shouldn't care either. And then flip it this way. The more you strive to make these lines perfect, the more pressure you're putting on yourself and the harder it's going to be to create a painting that you're happy with. Remember, this is a whimsical sort of piece, aesthetic to it. It's more about the expression than it is about the actual piece itself, the final product. We're just trying to express the pumpkin. All right. Now you can see I'm coming to the edges and starting to just fade away a little bit from those lines. And it might be a little hard if your paint is drying up already you can just dip the very tip of your brush in the water, just the very tip, and then come back along. And that should help moisten that paint up and it loosens up whatever's left in your bristles. But at, oh, let me get a little more water here. As we move through, that was a little too much. Learn from my mistakes. I'll just keep sweeping that out. Remember, the shadows are on the parts that move away from us. And that's what we're creating here. Again, I shouldn't really be fussing with that top, but I fuss. I know, I do. My name is Mel and I'm a fusser. Okay. I'm also trying to add just a little bit more shadow down at the bottom where it really starts to curve. That's given this pumpkin some great shape. I'm going to rinse the gray out of my brush, jingle jangle of my little glass marbles, and I'm going to grab white paint and I'm going to try it without any water in it this time. And my goal here is to hit the highlights, the curved parts that are going to be out the most and getting the most light. That's not what I meant to do there, but I'll smudge that out. I see things are getting a little funky here in the grooves. So let's address that so that we don't end up fussing. Okay, here we go. There we go, there we go. And I'm just gonna keep applying white until I'm happy with it. You can see I've overlapped a section there. Just gonna come back in a second, maybe add some of that gray back in. We'll see how I feel about it. It's important to overlap some of that gray because remember when a pumpkin curves, little bits of it are gonna stick out behind the deeper part in the shadow there. So we're just gonna hit this with a little bit more. We're not worrying about the top too much because that's where our flowers are gonna go. Continuing with that white, just trying to hit little bits more, just a few bits give it a little bit of brightness. I don't want to mess with the gray. That'll end up blending in and we don't need any of that nonsense. But I do see a couple of spots where I'm going to have to go back in with just a little more gray. So I'm wiping my brush off. 
and grabbing a little bit more. Grab a little bit more gray here. And I'm just lightly going over that edge. Just ever so slightly. It needs to be a little bit darker because that's probably the furthest spot away from us. Oh, that got a little dark too, didn't it? All right. We're just going to lighten up our touch there. And again, bringing those curves up from the bottom. They don't need to be lines, but they need to indicate some shape. It's little bits. I'm finding it's better if I flick my way up from the bottom. That's creating a little more shadow for me. Grab just a touch more. Try to create a little bit more depth here where I lost it just using that skinny edge of the brush and working little bits of it right through there. If you're having trouble with this skinny edge of the brush, go ahead and grab your smaller brush. That would be perfectly okay too. So what I want you to do now is just go ahead and pause the video or follow along as I continue, but take a few moments and make sure that you've got some little bright spots of white and some gray if your painting is still really wet, you may not get that bright white coming in here to just clean up these little bits. Just pulling away, just like that. Just sticking the bristles in there and pulling out. I do it toward the top and the bottom. And it looks really messy while it's wet, but let it dry. It'll be okay. All right, let's hit this with just a little bit more bright white. We may, as I said, we may have to wait for it to dry because while it's wet, we don't get that good coverage there. It'll blend in a little bit and it's kind of hard to deal with. Okay, good enough for now. So now that we have our pumpkin in, it's time to start working on our flowers. And we have three here. There are two red, they're really more of a burgundy and one that's got a little bit of pink in there. I don't know if you can see it from that light. I do always recommend pulling up the final image on a digital device like your cell phone, um, unless of course you're watching me from it. I've also included a gallery card in your kit that has a final image of the painting. So it's always a good idea. I don't know why I didn't mention that earlier, sorry. Um, keep that nearby so you've got a reference and you can see all the different colors that we'll put in there. But we're going to start with the two red ones. So here we go. We're going to continue. Hi, everybody. Okay, we're going to continue with our big brush here. We want to use the half inch brush. And I'm going to take a little bit of red. Remember, whenever we're touching our paint puddles, we always do so on the edge. I'm going to take about half of that red. Whoops, there we go. Now you can see half that red. And then I'm going to start with a tiny little dab here of black and stir that in. I want to get a nice deep red wine color. I'm getting close. I'm going to add just a tiny dot more black, swirl that in, and then use that edge of your plate as a scraper, just like the spatula on the side of the frosting bowl. And we're going to come in and pick out our flowers. Now, let's take a little moment to just do some reference here. Let's take a quick one last quick peek. We've got one that's just about in the center, just slightly off to the left a little bit. And then a second one that's up above. We're gonna start with this one on the right that's up above because it's behind the one below it. I know I need to fit three flowers in here. So I basically visually divide this section into thirds. I've got my burgundy paint here on my brush. And I'm going to make a rough circle. Looks like we're going to need to take just a little dip into our water. Remember when we're painting on this naked wood here, it's just so thirsty and we need to give it a little bit to drink. So I'm just giving a little bit of a wiggle and squiggle. You can see here the edge. Oh, let me move my arm over to the other side. I'm sorry. The edge here 
is just a little bit rough, but that's okay. We're going to put in that flower. Let's make it nice and round. It doesn't need to be perfect, though. In fact, it needs to have a few little wobbles and dings in the edge. Now we're going to come down to the center, drop down just a little bit lower. It can overlap that edge. And we're going to put in our second red flower. I'm going to grab a little bit more water and a little bit more paint. Try to come in at a different angle so you can see better. Now here I need to make sure I get in this little dip in the middle, the little gap. Bring that all the way around. And I'm going to try to clean this edge up just a touch. This flower has gotten a little bit more oblong and I'm okay with that little more oval. Now I'm going to rinse my brush, give it a little rinse, dry it off, and grab some white. I'm putting my third flower now, and I know that this one is still wet. It's okay. It's all okay, I promise. This one's a little bigger. I almost missed that. Whoop, there we go. Notice how my strokes, just like with the pumpkin, I went in a curve with my flowers. I'm trying to go in a circle or as close to a circle as I can. And I want that to overlap just a little bit more. Remember when I said the more we mess with things, the more they grow? This flower is a really good example of that. Okay. That edge though. Oi. Okay. There we go. I'm going to rinse my brush. And I'll be right back. We're going to start blocking in our leaves. Let's take a quick look at our leaves. We've got two branches with green leaves and one up here. I'm going to move them in a little closer. Well, there we go. They're yellow leaves with little hints of pink and bright yellow. You can see on the green leaves, we have little hints of white to create some highlights. They're a super simple shape. Two parentheses is all it's going to take. All right, we've got our small brush and we're gonna take some green paint and move it over with just a tiny little dab of white. This white here is already dirty, so I'm just gonna swirl that in and give that brush a little bit of a dunk in the water. We wanna just create a little bit more of a creamy consistency. Remember that when we make our first layer or coat on this wood, it can be a little dry and a little thirsty. So a little extra water doesn't hurt. I'm gonna start over here on the right. And I like to hold my brush a little further back on the handle toward the edge. These are short handled brushes. So if you're using a long handled brush, if you used your own, just grab it about halfway up. This will give it just a little bit more grace and allow that line to just flow nice and smoothly. Now remember, just as when we did our pumpkin and our roses, the first layer is not for our final coat. We're just trying to get in there and create the space. We're just trying to hold space. And apparently, I need to hold my palette because it's banging again. Okay, a little bit, another leaf here just placing them in. And our leaf shape is really, again, just two parentheses. This is looking just a little bit funky right there, but we've got a couple of layers to go, so I'm not gonna worry about it. Let's bring whoop, one coming down here from under that rose. Now, if this little divot here in the slat space is giving you trouble, don't mess with it too much. Stay away from it. Avoid it. You can make your leaf a little smaller or place it elsewhere. And one more over here. Good. So this is really my first layer of green. And I don't want to mess with this too much. I'm going to give everybody a few minutes to dry. Stop messing with them, Mom. Ugh. Just keep messing with it. Everything gets bigger. Okay, we're coming over to the left edge now. And this one's a little shorter. It just sort of dangles down again, a nice loose grip. One leaf on the end. And then I'm going to do one coming out on each side. I'm going to try to avoid 
that dip on the left side if I can, just because I don't, I don't want to be too fussy with it. And the more you have to fuss with it, the bigger your leaves are going to end up getting. So we want to keep those nice and easy. The whole point of painting is to have a good time. All right, I'm rinsing my brush off. And I'm going to make a little bit of a pale yellow. Grab some of that yellow. Whoa, got a little green in there. Let's hope it doesn't matter. A little more white, little bit of yellow. Oh, there we go. Little bit of yellow. And again, dip into our water and try to get a little bit more of a creamy inkiness to our lighter yellow here. You can see it's really not lemony yellow. It's not that bright. Well, maybe it is. It's getting there, but it's not pale. It's got a lot of brightness and vibrancy to it. Okay. Whoop. You can't see what I did. I just dropped my palette on the floor. Okay. Let's create our final little row of leaves here, our little vine. I'm just using that yellow to sketch it out. And I'm going to come in here and just start adding some leaves. Just as I did before, two parentheses connecting at the top and bottom. There's a little bit more water in this yellow paint than I got in the cream. So you can see it's really drinking up. That wood is just drinking up that paint. And that's okay, because we're gonna put another layer on it. I'm gonna just bring another one over here. It's gonna go over that little green leaf, but once these dry, we'll get a good layer on there and they'll get very distinct. And let's see, there we go. That'll work for now. They're marked out pretty well. I'm just gonna take a moment. Let's see, I'm gonna take just a moment here and smooth these out a little bit. That way when I go to clean up the edges later, I'm already working on a layer of paint instead of this wood that's probably still gonna be thirsty. So I'm just gonna get in here and clean these up. I'm not really putting a second coat on, although it kind of is. That's not my intention. Just trying to, there we go. Got a little bit of the leaf in there. Okay. I'm going to rinse my brush out, a little swishy swishy, and we're going to come back to our flowers. I'm going to continue with my small brush, and I'm going to take just a little bit of red and a little bit of that burgundy mix. So I'm using just a little bit of the burgundy with just a little bit of red. And I'm gonna start with the flower that's furthest in the back and just come around the edge. I wanna clean up any of that loose torn edge and swirl my way through. I'm going around where that white flower is. I'll paint it over this one. And I'm just swirling and swirling and tightening that circle until I get to the middle. You can't see the distinction. It's okay, we're not really supposed to yet. Without rinsing my brush, I'm grabbing just a little bit of black and I'm gonna put a dot, just a little dab. Now this paint is kind of thick. It may hold a little bit te of texture after it dries. And I know that it looks like there's a little bit of white, but I think that's really just the glare from our camera. And I'm gonna add one to our second rose as well. I'm not adding it to the white rose yet. And the reason for that is I don't want that rose to turn gray. And if I mess with it, it might. I'm gonna pull off just a little of that excess paint. Take a little off there. Okay, I'm rinsing all of that out now. And I'm gonna come back in with just a little bit more red. And this time I'm just using red by itself. And you can see I'm making these curved strokes. I'm not going all the way around. I don't need to. I just want to start creating the impression or suggestions of petals. 
I'm also continuing to hold my brush a little bit further back. That's going to loosen up my grip or the tension on those bristles. If I hold it way up here, I've really got fine control and everything's going to be just a little tight for lack of a better word. Let's grab just a little bit more red and finish this guy up. Now I'm getting close to that center and I'm just barely swooping around that edge a little. Maybe even bring just a little bit of that black out. Don't go crazy. And if it smears and gets weird, stop what you're doing. Wash your brush, take a blow dryer to your palette, let all of that dry and you can come back and take another whack at it. It's kind of like when you smudge your mascara if you, if it gets bad enough, you have to stop and wash it off and start over. Blow drying is the painting version of that. Once that's dry, it'll quit blending and you can put a new layer on and that'll take care of things. Now, before that dries, I've rinsed out my brush and I've grabbed a tiny bit of white. I use my hand. If I think I have too much paint on my brush, I just dab a little on, it'll wash off. And again, nice loose hold on your brush and just some short, curved strokes. We don't want anything too bright. Oh, look, we can pick up a little more here. We don't want anything too terribly bright. We just want to create a little bit of that highlight that would be coming off of the top of a rose petal. And remember, it's whimsical. You get away with that sort of stuff when things are whimsical. And a lot of this painting is going to be, um, oh, I'm sorry, this rose, a lot of this rose is going to be covered. So there are some sections I just don't need to worry about. Now, if I keep hassling with this, I'm going to end up with lots of pink. So I suggest just very carefully alternating between your red and your white this paint's drying very quickly at this point. We're just using little bits. They're not perfect. They should overlap. Roses are messy. They're gorgeous. But if you look down from the top, they're not the tidiest. A dahlia is a little bit more orderly than a rose. Okay. There we go. That's it. Oh, that got a little white. Okay. Now the light that you're seeing there in the screen is not what I'm seeing here in person. So clearly that's a lighting issue I'm going to have to work on. But let me just tone that down a little bit. Because otherwise that rose was like one of those Instagram makeup girls that puts on too much highlighter. Okay, there you go. Now we're going to come down and do that to our next rose. Going through the same process, grabbing a little bit of red. Oh, sorry about the jiggle and working our way around. I want to double dip with a little bit, just a little bit of that darker burgundy color. That'll keep things from getting too bright and light. Stopping for just a moment to handle that little slanted crack. Now you want to paint over this section, even though we know we're going to put that, whoops, that rose over it it will help us to make sure that we've got a good layer of depth there. And my rose is starting to grow. So now is the time to choke up on that bat and just clean up these edges. Take your time. I used to work with an artist that would say you should always breathe out on a stroke like this. Because otherwise we hold our breath while we're painting because you're concentrating really hard. Okay, so we've got that second layer of red. Wipe off our brush, grab that little bit of white. And again, we're just making those wispy curved strokes. I'm barely touching that surface, just barely touching it and just wisping through. Let them cross, let them overlap. They don't need to be perfect. If you're doing a drinking game with this class tonight, I highly recommend you use that phrase as your drinking word. 
We're almost halfway through. You'll still get bombed, I promise. Okay. There we go. A little bit more. I'm trying to get a little bit closer to that center, but not too close. Okay. Let's rinse this brush off. And we're going to tackle our third flower, our third rose. We've got a couple of little filler flowers, I call them, to put in there. All right, a little bit of white. And just like before, we're going to start at that outer edge and swirl. Continue with that swirl. Let's see if I can find a way to get in here without my hand blocking your view. There we go. Oh, that's not any better. All right, I'm sorry. I'm trying to find a good angle here for this little section. Just going to have to come up like this. Do not attempt this at home, at least painting from this angle. But just those light, wispy strokes, nice and easy. Let that pink streak through. We're going to have a little darker side there. That's okay. I'm taking just a little bit of water with my white right now to get it to move. And that way I don't have to fuss with it too much. The more I fuss with it, the more it's going to blend. And I'm working my way up toward that center. Remember, we have not put in that black center yet. Because I don't want to have any beef with that black turning everything gray. Okay. Now remember, the more... You go over that, the more you're going to lose your definition. So let's rinse this brush out and drop a little bit of black in the center, just like we did with the red roses. Just a little bit. That's it. Rinse it. We're going back to the lead. Okay, we're back to our leads. And we're going to continue with our small brush. I've cleaned it. And now I'm coming over to pretty much just plain green all by itself. I'm using just a little bit of water, not a whole lot. And I'm going over my stem. Remember, don't push too hard. Things get thick. And we're putting on that second layer of white. Excuse me, that's green, not white. I was just thinking we have to do the white highlights before the green dries and my brain and my mouth uh, did not cooperate. Okay, here we go. We're just going to continue putting in these leaves. Remember, holding that brush from further back is going to give you a little more grace in that stroke. Try not to overdraw them. But now you can take pieces like this leaf is going over the edge of this rose just a little bit. And don't forget, don't forget the crack. Oh, I'm getting a little punchy. I have not been drinking, although I'm going to have one when this is over, let me tell you. Okay, before I move over and start working on this other layer, I just wiped off the excess green. I didn't rinse the brush, just sort of swept it on my paper towel, excuse me, my washcloth. And what I want to do is figure out where my light is coming from. It's coming from this way. This is where our everything is lightest and brightest. So the part of the leaf that's facing toward that big white flower or pink flower, it's going to get just a quick hit, just a quick little swoop. You don't want to go over it too much. Things start to blend. And it's okay if it's just a little funky. When that happens, I just grab a little bit more of the green and just try to work it out. I don't want to overwork this because now I'm going to have to go back and add a little more white. But we don't want to rely on that in our practice when we're painting. We don't want to go think, oh, well, I'll just put another layer on it because then things get thick and that thickness starts to create its own texture issue. Okay, 
These are getting a little light and bright, so we're just going to give them a good hit and call that good. All right, let's just bring a little bit of that white down to highlight parts of that. Again, if it gets a little out of hand, just a little bit more of that green right over. And that's it. I'm going to come over here and repeat this process. Remember, our yellow leaf here is over this one. This guy's on the green one we're working on is underneath. So we're going to paint him and this buddy next door. It's getting dry when you feel like your paint's not gliding. Stop, get a little bit of water in your brush, not too much. You don't want it to drip. Use your paper next to you or underneath your work, excuse me. You can test it out on there. I like to do that when I'm mixing a color. Test it out on the paper before I take it to my actual painting surface. All right, so we've got the green in. I'm gonna grab just a little bit of white and this time, we're not gonna do what we did over there. We're not gonna overwork it. Look at that, hit it and quit it. One shot each, boom, done. But can I leave it alone? Probably not. You know, it's like when you're doing your makeup and you step back and you look and you're like, ah, but I just need to fix that little edge. Know when to quit, my friends. Okay. Now I want to give the green leaves a few minutes to dry. So we're going to start working on our flowers. And let me bring this up so you can see. We've got one, two, three little mum-like flowers and they're soupy, super, not soupy, Super easy to paint. Hang on, let me show you. I'm rinsing off my small brush because I don't want any green in this. We'll add some later. I've got a little of my yellow and white mix here. I'm just going to add a tiny dab more yellow and another little dab of white. And then to that, I'm going to add a little dab of red. And I'm swirling it, and you can see... We've got all those different shades going on. Little dip in the water and find spots to put our flowers. For example, I'm going to put one right over here and I'm going to start on one side and pull in toward the center. And as I work my way around, I just fan out that shape. Now we're going to do one layer just like this. Come over, find another space to put one. Uh, I'm going to try to stay away from those cracks. They're giving me a little bit of trouble. Maybe just the base of this one. Okay, remember, let me bring my arm around here so you can see. Pull toward that center. And let them get shorter and smaller as you work your way. Whoops, see, look, I said I wasn't going to do that crack. Totally did the crack. Crack is whack. Okay. And uno mas, one more. We're going to come up here in the corner and add one more. Got to try not to put my fingers in wet paint. Remember, we're starting at the edge of the petal and working our way in like this. Now, this guy is going to be a little bit behind that rose. I may need to come in and clean that edge up. I'm going to give that brush just a quick little rinse. And I want to go to the rose color. If you're out, it's just a little bit of red with even less black, just a tiny bit. And what I want to do now is start right at the base again and just pull up. But I'm not going all the way up. Just a few quick flicks. I'm coming partway up the petal. And that's just going to create a little more drama, a little dimension, and give it some fun, some fun shading. And our last little guy down here. They may still be wet. You may be getting some blending. And that's okay. Just like that. Little dabs, no biggie. I can see right here, I don't know if you can see it, I put my hand in a little piece of that leaf. And now I have a little bit of green where I don't want it. So I'm just gonna cover that up. 
and promise not to touch that anymore. Okay, let's add a little bit of white to these flowers and then we'll be about done with them. We just have to put in the little cap on the bottom. Okay, little bit of white with a little bit of water. And I'm just coming to the very top edge of those flowers. One thing you can do is at this point, pull all the way down. And all these colors are going to start to mix together just a little bit. I've added that water to my white so it's a little translucent. And it just lets everything sort of blend together with little hints of white creating that highlight. Now, if you go over it too much, you're going to lose that white. And then you'll have to come back in just a little bit like I am here. But I'm being real loose with these strokes, just little flicks, overlapping different lengths. Give the brush a rinse. And let's add the little green sections on the base. Just taking a little bit of plain green by itself, starting at the base and just putting in a little bit of green. We don't have a whole lot of greenery in this painting, but we need just a little, a little cap there on the base where it connects to the stem. Don't mess with it too much. It'll take over. All right, let's see. What have we got left? Our yellow leaves. We're getting really close. All right, one thing I want to do before we go any further is just look here at my pumpkin. Everything is dried pretty well. So I'm going to swap out, switch gears for just a second and go back to my big brush. I'm going to grab just a little bit of white. Remember that trick I taught you? Just put a little dab on the side of your hand. Go back to that white. Put a little dab here on the side of your hand. And I want to come in and just lightly hit with some really clean, bright white, just a few little bits. Remember, expression or just trying to create some highlight and enjoy the process. We're not trying to make everything perfect. The whimsical rustic nature of this is gonna make it pretty and attractive. There we go. I feel like I lost a little bit of the shading and now is a really good example for us to talk about why you don't wanna mess with things too much once you've almost got them done. Okay, coming back in. I don't, this is it. This is my last pass. A little bit of gray. And again, just bringing that up to create. I have a little bit more shadow. And it doesn't need to be all even. Just a little bit. Follow that curve shape. Follow that curve. Just a little bit. All right. Woo. We are nearly done, friends. We are almost there. We're going to finish our yellow leaves and then add a few little dots to the centers of our flowers, and we are gonna be able to hang this on the wall. I am going back to the yellow here that we used for our leaves. So I've got some yellow and a little bit of white, and I'm gonna add a tiny bit of pink to it, or excuse me, red, just like we did over here, I ran out. So I've got that ready to go. I wanna use that as a highlight to my flowers, or excuse me, my yellow leaves. Not gonna clean my brush, just gonna lighten up some yellow with white all by itself. Okay, I'm gonna double dip between those two shades, yellow and white, and this is also yellow and white with a little bit of red. Here we go. Oh, need a tiny touch of water. And let's try to get a better angle for you. This leaf, I'm gonna move just a little bit. There we go. Oh, that doesn't work, you can't see that. All right, we're gonna put in a leaf right here. I just covered that flower and I'm not happy about it. So once I get this leaf done, I'll come back and fix that one. This leaf is gonna overlap 
the green one though. I already knew that. Remember I'm double dipping yellow and white with a little bit of that peachy orange as well. And we're just going over the leaves that we mapped out. You're gonna need a little bit of water. This wood is still really super thirsty. There we go. And let's go over that stem one more time, okay? Same thing with that dark tone. Boom, right there. And we're gonna take a few minutes to clean up all of those edges as soon as we get our ourselves handled here. I'm just coming in with a little bit of yellow and white. Okay, so this is our in process piece. A couple of things I wanna point out. There are some slight variations from the reference that we worked from. I think my pumpkin's a little bigger, my flowers are definitely bigger, but I'm gonna come in and just clean up some of my edges. Now, you fiddle too long, you're gonna go wrong. So be super careful. I find that it's usually really helpful at this stage to stop and just take a break, step away from it so that I can come back with fresh eyes. And with those fresh eyes, I'll be able to better determine whether or not I can live with certain parts of it or whether or not I really need to fix them because I'm sort of a picker, I like to fix things. So go ahead and pause the video, take a moment, stand up, stretch, get yourself another drink, go yell at the kids, walk the dog, whatever it is you need to do, we'll come back spend about 10 more minutes just cleaning up our edges. All right, I'll see you soon. Okay. All right, so we are ready to take one last pass at it. What I want you to do now is stand up and think about where you wanna put this piece. If you already know where it's going to go, hang it up there, set it on that shelf, step back, take a look at it. When you're really close to your piece, like you are right now, while we're working, we've got to get close to see it and to reach it. Our eye is going to pick up every single little string or tear in a line. So when we're super close to the piece, our eyes can visualize everything. We see every little nook and cranny, the little tears in the line where color didn't blend the way we want to, but that's because we're super close. So think about when you've used the scary side of the mirror, like to tweeze your eyebrow or your lip. Um, everything looks super freaky. Your, every pore on your nor nose is the size of a salad plate. And this is because we're so close. But if we stop and we back up and move backwards, get a little bit of distance between ourselves and the piece, we're gonna be able to visualize it the way that we would when we're looking at it and enjoying it in our everyday lives, or in this case, for the fall season. So make sure you move back, put the piece where you think you want it to go and examine it and what's going to be its new environment or its new home. And at that point, you'll be able to pinpoint with near laser accuracy what you need to work on. So make sure that you're looking at it from a good distance, a good eight feet away probably, and then decide exactly what final details are that you need to do. Okay, so I took my own advice. I stepped back, I took a good look at it, and these are the things I know. I really want to bring this flower back in front of that leaf. I really should have painted the leaf first and then the flower. So I'm just coming in. I'm really just picking up different versions of the color we used because mine dried up. There we go, oh, that's better. Just a few little squiggles right down into that green. I won't have to redo that. And maybe just a little bit of white on this edge near the leaf so that it can really stand out. We can see it. Okay. It's pretty good, right? Okay. And now over here, I can see that this flower where that wood was really thirsty kind of drank up uh, the highlight that we put there. So I'm just coming in, going over these. I should have gone over them twice. I'm gonna go over them now. But you have already decided what you need to do to work on your piece, because I can't see it. So I'm just giving you all the suggestions of all the things that I have encountered. 
or that could possibly be going on. All right, there we go. I do want to come back. There are a couple of leaves here on this side where I just want to give them a little bit more brightness because as that wood dries, again, it's soaking up the color. I might actually even just bring a little bit of that orange color under the bottom edge there where it's a little bit darker. Oh, that didn't work very well, did it? This is all part of the process, right? It's not ruined. I just have to come back in and clean it up. Just like that, adding little hints of white there. Remember, we don't want to go overboard. Oh, yeah, that's much better. I am much happier with that. Okay, now, um, one more thing I want to do is just come around the edge of these roses. You are doing whatever it is that you need to do. You can always pause me and come back. I will try to put a marker um, down below, or you can just fast forward when you're done. But see how I'm just bringing, I've choked up on the brush here. Choke up on the mat. And I'm using my darker tone and just trying to real carefully get in there and clean that up. Whoop, almost made myself more trouble there. Added a whole new edge to it, darn it. All right, slow down, take a breath. There we go. Add a girl. That's how you do it. Okay, just a little bit. There we go. I hope that when I have these verbal outbursts, it doesn't um, affect your confidence in me. I'm just a big giant dork and I yap a lot. Okay. Final step. We've cleaned off our small brush, grab a little bit of white, and I'm just going to come over and add a couple little dabbings to the same spot on those flowers in the center. That's it. Now, I always recommend you sign your piece. I wouldn't want to sign the front of this because who wants to interfere with the beauty that is this? All right, so there it is. It's complete. I really want to see your finished pieces. So please send photos. Uh, maybe I can post them at paintwithmel.com if you're okay with that. But I would love to see them. You can send them to me on Instagram. You can send them to me on Facebook. Uh, Facebook is Paint with Mel B. Instagram is paint underscore with underscore Mel. I will make sure to list them all here on the screen. Um, if you haven't already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel so that we can come back and paint together. In addition to these sessions that you get with your all-in-one paint kit, I'm going to be posting some informational videos where we can practice different techniques like blending or creating flowers or using different layers to start building up some dimension and some vibrancy and luster um, in our piece. So here's the final piece. Make sure that you sign it. I recommend doing it on the back. I'm just going to use a Sharpie and write Mel. And the year, always make sure that you date your piece if you can. That way you can see your progress as you move along in your painting practice. So it was a pleasure to paint with all of you. Thank you so much for coming and painting with me. I hope you really enjoy your sweet pumpkins and roses and that you have a fantastic fall.